Hello everyone, my name is Graham and today we're going to be talking about using technology in order to improve the quality of your on-stream voice. Um, primarily, uh, the focus for this is going to be in two parts. Um, so first part is going to be some educational side because I want to talk a little bit about the actual technology behind this and the meaning behind some of the buttons that we're going to be using. And the second part of this is going to be a, a quick demo of voice meter. Uh, I have voice meter banana installed. If you're interested in the second part of this and you just want to do a setup guide, you're, you don't really care about the technology, you just kind of want to know what the buttons are and how they work and things like that, um, go ahead and skip to the second part of this video where I'm going to be going through that. In the beginning here, what I want to start talking about first, for those of you who are sticking with me, uh, is a concept called compression. And so compression is basically a method by which you can make quiet things louder and louder things quiet. Um, what's really useful about this is that if you are a person, and I'm a person like this, but there are also many other people like this, where your voice has dynamics. Uh, dynamics basically are the changes in volume. If you have changes in volume in your speaking, and you can go from very quiet to very loud, what compression does is it normalizes the volume of your quiet and your loud so that you have a very equal experience and you can imagine, you know, you're on stream, maybe you get excited and you raise your voice. You don't want to blow out the speakers of whoever's listening to you. Conversely, if you get quiet for a moment, you want that to be audible. And so compression is a way to do that. The second tool that we're going to be talking about primarily, uh, we will talk a little bit about equalization. It's kind of not a focus for this. Um, because generally you want to leave your equalizer neutral unless you like really notice something wrong with your voice. The second tool we're going to be talking about is called a gate. Uh, it's, usually it's called gate for shorthand. It's actually called a noise gate. And what a noise gate is, is it is a way to eliminate lower level sounds. So we were talking about dynamics before. Dynamics, if you think about a sound with a very low dynamic, um, so it can be something that is kind of off mic, right? Like if you snap in the background, or it can be the sound of cars passing outside of your window, or you shuffling in your seat, things like that. A gate is a way that you can basically choose a noise floor, and anything under that noise floor will not activate the microphone, and therefore will not come up on stream or in any other place you don't want it to come up in your recording, things like that. And so basically, using these technologies, we can create a situation in which your voice is equally loud across all the things that you're doing, and also not showing up when it's not supposed to. So let's jump over to the technology. Okay, so this is voice meter banana. And what I'm going to be doing, you can see I already have it configured. I'm going to go through a little bit of the configuration for you. And then we're going to look at essentially what happens when it's on versus when it's off. So just to start with, when you run this for the first time, it's probably not going to be picking up your mic. What you're going to want to do is you're going to go up to the stereo input area and you're going to want to click on it. What that's going to do, and you, now you can see my cursor, is it's going to bring up your choices for the input. And what you'll notice in my situation here is that I actually have multiple different inputs that are essentially the same thing. If you go to the configuration guide, they uh, luckily voice meters, they're very good at what they do. And they explain to you these different settings. Basically each one of these, uh, MME, multimedia, kernel streaming, and this WM setting, each one of them comes with their own pros and cons. So please go look at the manual and read through this. I have chosen the kernel streaming, and the reason why I've done this is because in the manual, what they say is that this is the lowest latency, meaning that there this is the lowest amount of, of millisecond time between when I say something and when the effects kick in and it actually does complete what it's supposed to complete, and also is supposed to be high fidelity, which is, of course, what we want, right? Um, there are many reasons why you may not have this available to you, depending on what software you're running and things like that. So you may only have one choice out of these. If you have multiple choice, look through the developer's manual. You will find one that will fit you and you should do that. So I've selected this. 
you can see I've selected it here. Um, it'll tell you that you've selected it already. If you're, if you've already gotten it, there'll be a little pop-up that says like, you've already selected this one. Do you want to do it again? I'm going to X out of this real quick. So now that we have it selected, what you should be seeing is here, you'll see that I have like a little bit of a, uh, UI UX experience where it's, it's actually showing me that it's picking up my voice properly. We're partway done with the configuration, with the initial configuration at that point. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you'll probably notice actually when you're talking, and I'm going to turn this off for a second so you can tell the difference from an audio perspective. If I take this off, you'll notice that only one side is showing up. And um, depending on my streaming settings, you may only notice that it's coming in through one ear or both. I think I have it set up on my OBS so that this is going to be forced into mono anyway. Um, but if I didn't have that on, you would only hear my voice through one side. I'm turning it back on just in case that is the case for you as a viewer. Um, but basically what this does is that mono will mean that your voice will come through equally between both sides of the headphones or through both speakers. So you generally want to have this on. There's not really much of a use for you to be in stereo unless you actually have uh, panning. Panning is a t technology by which you can choose one side or the other side for your audio to come through. The next thing that you're going to want to do after you do that is you're going to want to select one of these B outputs. So your A1 output input is the going to be the default for all cases. And your B1 output is important because what will happen is if you go into Discord, if you go into any sort of other thing like vMix, you, when you're in the process of selecting your microphone to use for those services, this will actually start showing up. So in your audio settings, you'll actually have an option now. If you go, for instance, into Discord, into your user settings, into voice and video, you'll see a voice meter out B1. And this B1 here is going to correspond to that. And what that'll mean is that when you start using your voice, this it will go through the program and it'll come out the other side and it'll be applied with the effect settings. If you use your default that you've been using up until now, what will happen is it'll be pre-effects and you won't really be getting the benefit out of using this. Um, although Discord and Zoom and some of these other technologies do actually use some of these features, you really want to be able to take advantage of it. All right, now let's talk about compression. Compression is a very useful tool because, um, as I mentioned for the first part of the video, it makes quiet things loud and loud things quiet. And you'll notice that I've already got a setting set here. So I have it set basically um, after playing around with it a little bit and trying out some quiet stuff and trying out some loud stuff, you get to a point where you really, this graphical bar here that has the, uh, you'll see that there's a, a gray and then there's a green. This can go up pretty loud. And it, it, what will happen is if you see, I take the compression off, you'll probably notice this as well, that my voice is, is a little more inconsistent than it was before. You're getting more of the dynamic range of my voice with this off. And if I were to go louder, you'll see that I now the bar is kind of closer to where I was before. Um, and so basically what the compression does is it's going to equalize that. I think I had it about like 1.5 before. Uh, but what this really means is that if you start shouting, you won't get into this red area. Basically the red area, the yellow and the red are indicators that you are kind of pushing this a little bit too much. Um, what I'm going to do for illustrative purposes is I'm going to bring this DB meter up a little bit and you'll see that I start getting into that red area. And that's really bad because it'll introduce distortion. Um, Digital distortion is not very good. It's going to sound really bad on whatever ears you're listening to with this. So we want to try to avoid that red area at all costs. Um, this dB slider, uh, decibels basically are volume. It's a volumetric, right? Um, this dB slider, you probably want to leave it zero if you can. Um, if you slide it around and you want to reset it, you can just double click on it. That's a feature that you'll see across pretty much every single um, sound-based technology is usually double click resets it to neutral again. All right. So for the second part of this, um, I'm going to try to do a little bit of illustrative, uh, explanation for this gates. What gates do are they basically remove background noise and they don't do it through any sort of uh, software technology by which they take the signal and then clean it. Basically what it does and going back to the earlier part, if you were listening to the earlier part of this explanation, the gate will basically create a threshold 
by which the microphone does not activate until you reach a certain level of volume. And this is really handy because you might shuffle around in your chair or you might move around or there might be some background noise in your house or other things like that that would normally come through the mic. And this is an ability to basically restrict that from happening. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gate all the way off. And then I'm going to turn it back on and I'm going to show you a little bit of the difference between it. So first, we're going to drop this gate all the way to zero. And I'm going to jump to my cam so you can see this. Now, with the gate off, if I snap off screen, you can hear it, right? If I go ahead and activate this gate, you can kind of hear it and it, it's sort of in the background now. And if I kick it up more, we get to the point where you really don't hear it all the time. Now, depending on how loud I snap, it's going to eventually start breaking through the gate. But you can solve that you can solve that eventually by turning up the gate now the problem with a gate and the reason why you need to be careful with the settings on this and i'm going to go switch back over the reason why you have to be careful with this is because gates do essentially introduce latency um, as you turn up a gate what's going to happen is eventually the what's called the plosive in your voice so the the, the initial kind of like burst of air when you go and you actually say something the plosives will start to get cut off by the gate because the gate is going to take too long to activate. And the activation window for this is essentially going to change as you implement this, right? And that's kind of what a gate does is it, it kind of cuts off the very front of any sort of sound that's coming through this up to a limit. And the more aggressive the gate is, the more you turn it up, the more that's going to happen. All right. We have made it through basically all of the content here. Um, the only other things to talk about are some nice to haves. And one nice to have feature in here is the ability for you to solo your input. And the reason why this is important is if you actually had multiple inputs and you only wanted to get one of them going through. So let's say for instance, you were using the stereo input two and stereo input three, what you can do is you can solo and that is going to, you see this turns on mute for all these other ones over here. Um, and so soloing is basically a way for you to disable all the other inputs that you're not using currently. Um, I have this off because I have no reason to have it on. I'm not using any of the other inputs for anything, but that's a useful feature. You'll notice you also have a mute. The mute does exactly what you think it does. It turns off the ability for this to be picked up and transferred over to the outbound bus. Finally, what you'll find are the master section and the master section will allow you to apply for a1 or a2 or a3 or b1 which is b1 is now what we're talking about the output you have fader gains for this or you can reduce the volume of it if it's getting too loud things like that you can boost the volume if you're too quiet and you have the same mono and eq and mute settings for this as well too um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply the mono for the B1 output. It doesn't really matter here. We can just turn this back off. Um, there's actually a few other functionalities here too that you'll be able to get into in the settings that allow you to do other things. Um, go through the manual because I, there's some really cool stuff in here, but maybe not applicable to everybody. And the other thing that you're going to find here is there is a hardware out. And this is useful for what's called input monitoring. Input monitoring is when you take the outbound signal that you have going from a device and you feed it back to yourself. So in this case, you can see that I have my outbound speakers. So uh, the speakers for my Focusrite um, USB audio interfaces here. And if I select the speakers, what will happen is it'll start piping back. And I'm not gonna turn this on just for my own benefit because I don't really wanna hear it right now. Um, but if you turn this on, what it'll do is it'll take the output from B1 um, in this case or in this case, A1, because what we're doing is we're selecting it based on the input and it'll feed it right back into my headphones. This is really beneficial if you feel like you like to have a little bit of your voice back in your own ear and you can choose how much of it you want in your ear using some of the sliders and other settings here. The benefit of that really is that you'll be able to audit your own voice and be able to tell how you sound as you're talking. And also you can then, I would highly recommend this, by the way, as a first time setup, because when you set these compressor settings, when you set the gate settings, using that hardware out monitoring, the input monitoring 
will allow you to figure out whether or not what you're doing is working the way you hope it will. All right, so this concludes the video. Um, if anybody has any feedback, any questions, you can feel free to leave some stuff in the comments. Uh, um, hopefully I'll be able to get to it. And if you like the video, please subscribe. Um, hopefully I will have some more content for you in the future, but um, I hope everybody enjoyed this. I hope this was very informative for you. And um, by the way, I should mention voice meter is free. Um, so this is not a paid content. Uh, this is just some technology that you'll see a lot of people using. And I wanted to evangelize for it as a pretty specific way to get the stuff that you want done done. So thanks for watching.